Rwanda is, it just goes on and on and on. We are gifted to have the best species, which are the gorillas. And right now Uganda holds the largest amount of um, gorillas in Africa. We have the equator, which goes right across us. The center well. of the world. Center of the world. So we get both to where there's the hot and the cold, the greenery, the animals, the parks, the people. Lovely, absolutely lovely. My name is Professor Ephraim Kamuntu. I'm the Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Heritage in the Republic of Uganda. I am with a colleague, Ambassador Patrick Mugoya, who is the Permanent Secretary in the same Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Heritage. We are here in London attending World Market, uh, Travel Market Exhibition, and we are very, very pleased that uh, Africans in London TV is here to share with us our experiences since we came and share with us the experience we bring from home to our colleagues, the Africans and non-Africans in London. Now, you see Uganda yes. is known as a pal of Africa yes. and nobody disputes it. Yes. So, but can you emphasize that by telling our viewers what have you brought to the world? How, uh, what are you telling the world? I will begin with the, with the facts speaking for themselves. Instead of the minister speaking, let the facts speak. And we begin with Churchill, the famous prime minister of this, of this land, London, England, United Kingdom. In his famous journey to Africa, 1908, this is not Minister of, of Tourism for Uganda, this is the Prime Minister, fascinated on his journey of what he saw after traveling across the African continent. And this is what he had to say. I'm quoting. He said, well, the journey is done. The story must be told. And he summed it in three, three words. Concentrate upon Uganda and he said you explore Uganda explore Uganda the climate the people the smile of the people and the warmth of the climate he wondered which is warmer the smile of the people or the, the warmth of the climate yeah. Uganda is the only one country in the world where the source of the Nile that intrigued explorers the water right into the Mediterranean Sea where it comes from we are the country we can feel very proud the source of that Nile which is the source of civilization over centuries the mountains of the moon known during time of Romans Mount Renzori is the only area in the world where you are on the equator and the equator is supposed to be an area receiving rays of the sun direct to expect snow on the equator geographically is a, a wonder of the world. Here is Uganda sitting on the equator with mountains of the moon capped with snow. Uganda is a home to gorillas. The gorillas are the closest cousins of human beings. We are. And indeed, as we shall show, demonstrate to you, these gorillas, as you can see, just <laughs> if you see <laughs> behind you, if you see behind me, yes, Uganda is a home of more than the remaining mountain mountain gorillas remaining in the world. Then, if you talk about the land of lakes, Lake George, Lake Victoria, Lake Edward, Lake Elbert. Lake Wamara. If you talk about the fauna and, and the flora, where the, the tropical forest meets the savanna, only Uganda has. But equally, and more importantly perhaps, what Uganda has lacked in the past is that our history has been turbulent 
and people, most people remember Uganda with the last King of Scotland. And we are telling them, since 1986, the country has enjoyed stable, secure, political and economic environment. And we have been rated recently, let me add this, Uganda has been rated by the Lonely Planet. This is one of the largest travel guides and media publishers in the world. They have ranked Uganda number one tourist destination 2012. And we feel the world should know about this. And they quote the attractions, some of which I have already mentioned. Lake Mnyonyo, Ginger. Then we house the Commonwealth, which enabled us to expand our accommodation. Our accommodation, so for conferences, destinations, meetings, events. Uganda is really class. And because we have been rated, Uganda has been rated number one tourist destination next year. That year coincides with 50 years of our independence. It is a huge year of celebration. We would want to invite the whole world to come to Uganda to enjoy these natural endowments which God has given us. And we have very friendly people. Since I'm talking to the Africans in London, we speak excellent English in Uganda, and we cannot communicate. <laughs> but, Minister, thank you very much. And I think, is, as the ambassador, do you have anything to add? Well, the only thing I can add uh, to what the minister has said, in addition to what the minister has said, we have the big five, the big animals. We have the elephants, we have tree climbing, lions, for those who enjoy fishing, angling on the River Nile, a lot of potential there. We have white water rafting. For those who want adventure on the River Nile, many of those bungee jumping, a lot of activities that can take place, both in the parks and outside. And for those who are religious, there is religious tourism. Uganda... I don't repeat that. Religious tourism. Yes. Or faith, or faith, faith tourism. tourism. So That's that like, means actually you are like the like only Rosa country, Rosa probably America. Ethiopia, that has religious tourism. So you could be two, only two countries in Africa doing this? Possibly that could be true. We have in Uganda a number of martyrs who were killed during our history. And we have a religious shrine to mark the place where these martyrs were killed. And uh, people, especially from the Christian faith, have been coming every year on an annual pilgrimage. So in addition to looking at the culture, the great offerings in terms of tourism attraction, that's another area where once every year we have a huge pilgrimage of Christians coming to this site. So that's another area where we would welcome people to come and see what Uganda has to offer. One thing probably I might say, uh, as you have said, that you want the whole world to know. So, but my question would be, how are you going about that? How do you make the world know? How do you market Uganda? Yes. Uh, Andrew, give me a book there. This nation in Uganda. I have been asked, how do we make the world know about the unique attractions that Uganda has. We came for this travel market exhibition event, which is a huge event held annually for the last 40 years. I came with more than 13, 15 Ugandans exhibiting different, different uh, attractions they have as tour operators. But we have also published Destination Uganda 2000, Destination Uganda 2011-2012. In this book, which we are distributing widely, and we are going to give you a copy. Yes, we are going to give you a copy right now. It is our attempt to make the world know about what Uganda can offer.
I also believe your interview, your interview, this interview you are holding with me right now with my partner and secretary is intended to get the world to know what Uganda can offer. We have done a number of interviews, number of uh, publications, but marketing is a quite expensive item. Uh, we are uh, considering, planning uh, to, to embark on massive national and international uh, communication strategy that would make the world and domestically the country know that tourism is very important. We have, in our national development plan, identified tourism as one of the drivers of economic transformation. It generates foreign exchange, it contributes to GDP, it employs many Ugandans. But in addition, the more frequently visited the country is, the more important it is in world affairs. We want to reposition Uganda as a major player in international relations, and that can be matched by more people that visit us. This is also our contribution. We are conserving all this heritage for us and the rest of the world. Some of the countries who have wiped out uh, their natural endowment, now they can come to Uganda to see what we have conserved for us and for them. That's why we should make it known. We are the only guys with with the with with the, with, the, with, the, with marks. This is a punch mark of so a gorilla from Uganda. Okay. And these are the foot marks of a gorilla from Uganda. People talk about footprints. When when you talk about a footprint, it means you have made a mark. And we can say, if you went in the whole world looking for the footprint of a gorilla, you can only find a footprint. That footprint can only be found in Uganda as one of the unique attractions. Gorillas also do punching. They can punch. They can give you a punch. And, and when the gorilla was punching, we captured it. This is a gorilla punch boxing. I'm sure this punch, as the gorilla is punching, it punches and it leaves a mark and this mark is part of our trademark. Uganda is the only country with a footprint of a gorilla and a gorilla punch all marked as a heritage for us to show the rest of the world.